press that button for me. That should be on your main screen right now. All right? Not that I want you staring at the screen the whole time while you're driving around out there. But that gives a real cool perspective like going through the water and climbing the hill. The camera stays on as long as the vehicle stays under 10 miles an hour, which we will be out there. Gonna go over that getting there, but I'll remind you again when we get on the course, press it if you want, all right? I'll be right down here in this X5. Renee, you're right behind me. Eduardo, you're my tail gunner. Let me jump in and get mine fired up. So put them in gear, put them on the brake. Grab the gear selector with your right hand button on the left side. Press it in, pull it back. That'll get us in a forward gear. Start with a slow roll. Just follow me and each other. Unlike riding around on the track this morning, all of our stuff's a lot slower speeds. Just the nature of the off-road. Uh, some of the hills that we climb out here, they're steep. You're literally going to lose sight of the road in front of you, but you got the fence posts, bushes, and I will be there directing you up and over. Just stay smooth and steady with the gas pedal. Just about a car length or two in between each of us, plenty of distance for us to keep from one another. left turn here. This is the entrance to the off-road. Now the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go through the water crossing. Now you guys know out in the real world you never want to cross any flooded streets or streams, anything like that. They say six inches of water can take a grown man right off the street. A foot of moving water can move a vehicle down the road. Two feet of water gang, we're talking trucks and SUVs. It will literally float the vehicle. Very dangerous. You want to avoid it. Now, today, our water is stationary, and that allows us to go through safely. All right, at this point, reach down and press that camera button. Get that front camera view going again. And just for the water crossing, roll your front windows down. When you can hear this water that you're going through, that adds kind of another cool element to it. All right, here we go. Nice and easy. We don't want to create a big splash or a wave here. Once you get in about idle speed, we'll carry you across. I usually just kind of drag my brake a little bit. Use the rock wall, keep yourself right in the center. Now the X vehicle can do about 18 to 20 inches in depth. That's exactly where we are. So now the middle of the wheels are just over the bottom of the doors, which the doors are watertight when you exit. Like I said, you got to lose sight of the road. The road. Just get the wheel straight, hand it down and free the left foot on the footrest. Give yourself a little acceleration. You got to come right up and out. Anything about crossing water, if you absolutely had no other choice, got to keep that water level down below the wood on any vehicle. Most of your intakes, like your air intakes, are on top of the motor. If water gets sucked down in there, it will lock it up in a heartbeat. Trust me, we've seen it done out here, not pretty. So keep it slow. Down below the hood, you can go through water like that all day. Nice job. All right, next we have what we call the frame bender, but it's not going to bend the frame. It's going to do a couple things. One, show the great balance these vehicles have. Two, might demonstrate some of the X drive. One at a time. Start with your right side drive. Gently squeeze the gas. Keep it nice and slow until the left front touches the left mound. Use your brake to bring it to a stop. From here, just repeat the process. Now, what you're looking for and might feel are the wheels kind of spinning freely. Losing traction. My right front, what? Two feet in the air not doing any good at all. The X drive will come in and take the power away from that wheel and distribute that power equally to the remaining tires I still have on the ground with good traction. 
That way, I am always getting 100% of my power, no matter how many wheels I'm using. Two, three, or all four. So it's a constant, smooth pressure with the gas pedal. Stays up, start tapping your brake. You can almost get it to balance up here. That right front goes down, nice and easy coming off. There you go. Grenade pulling up there and try that out. I mean, yeah, those are two pretty good sized mounds, and that vehicle is basically being pulled over by just two wheels one in the front and one in the back. There you go, now squeeze that gas pedal. Let's see a little wheel spin. <laughs> Perfect, nice. All right, Renee, pull right here to the spot where I'm at and hold tight until I call for you. Okay, just let me quickly demonstrate. Smooth and steady with the gas pedal. If you're using your fence post, I actually want you a little more to the left than you would be to the right. And when we get to the top, it is two complete stops. Right here is stop number one. Now I'll be outside the vehicle coaching you from the other side. Just listen for my commands. From here, we're going forward about another three feet. Right side tires going up. Back end's coming up right in here. Stop number two. Complete stop number two. Then I'm going to redirect your front wheels. Just make sure they're in good shape. And then you'll just regulate your speed with your brakes coming down the other side. Dang, it's just as easy as that. Trust me, it looks a lot worse than what it really is, okay? And I was just kidding with you earlier. We hardly ever turn them over. Hardly. Renee, if you're ready, come on up. Slow and steady wins the race. And at 9, we're going to let foot on the foot rest. Eduardo, you go ahead and start rolling forwards. Work that frame bender. Work yourself to the bottom of the hill. Okay, I've got the visuals looking good. Nice and easy. Keep on coming, just like that. Oh, that's perfect. Keep on coming. There you go. Keep coming. Smooth and steady. Straighten the wheel back up. Perfect. Another foot. You are there. All right. Squeeze the gas pedal. Give me three more feet. Hit the brakes and hold it there. Keep the wheel straight. Keep it like it is. You're fine. That's a great angle. One thing, Ray, remember, you got to breathe. You got to breathe. <laughs> All right. So, actually, just hold tight. I forgot something else when we started. I got like a 20 minute speech on vehicle dynamics. I'm kidding, of course. Slowly release the brake. Nice and easy. Let it roll. You guys are down the hill. It's just you, gravity, and the brake pedal. Nice and easy, keep on coming. That's it. Down the hill. Nice job. Keep on pulling up about right here. That's high. There you go. Joe, if you want to jump out and video Eduardo coming over, you're more than like to do it. All right, Eduardo, if you're ready, come on up. Same thing. Slow and steady. Use your fence post, not the only hill we're climbing. Alright, I got the visual. A little bit to the left. Just a little adjustment. That's perfect. Keep on coming like that. Keep on squeezing. A little bit of an adjustment to the left. There you go. And you're there. Alright. To keep that wheel turned just a little bit to your left. There you go, right there. Now hold it right there. Squeeze that gas pedal. Give me three feet. Hit the brakes. Remember, it's a constant, smooth pressure. There's your X drive. Transferring power to your right front. It's got the best traction. There you go. Perfect. Now let it roll. Nice and easy. A couple more feet. And hold it right there. Nice. Now that is a great angle. That is awesome. And smile and wait for the cameras down here. All right. All right. Again, it's just you gravity and the brake pedal. Nice and easy, under control, all the way down here to the bottom. That's it. You guys are rock stars. Making my job easy this Friday afternoon. I love it. 
pulled right down here, nice and tight. Renee, roll your window down. Why? Did a great job. Alright, Joe, make sure your seatbelt's back on and continue to follow me to the washboards. Now these are just buried obstacles working the suspension. Now a couple things. Light grip on the steering wheel. Notice it doesn't get jerked out of your hands. Two of these vehicles will level themselves out rather quickly. They don't continuously just bounce along down the road. Now these are the same vehicles that we use on the track. High speed braking, the handling forces. Uh, we use these vehicles to take the morning group over to the museum. Then think about multiple laps a day, seven days a week out here on a pretty aggressive course, right? Showing you how well they're putting them together right across the road. Right, now we find ourselves at the hill climb. Now all rules still apply. You don't have to wait for me to call you up. Just keep rolling. This is very simple. Make the turn and get the wheel straight. Hands back to nine and three. Here's where the left foot comes into play. Put some pressure on it. It'll help keep you stabilized in your seat. Now you will need some acceleration, but again, smooth and steady. With the gas pedal. And oh yeah, don't forget to breathe. Key elements, throttle control and breathing. Straight shot up, straight shot across the bridge. Renee, that's perfect. You get across the bridge, there's a row of cones to the left. The last one is tall, white, red stripes. Turn your head to the left, then turn the wheel. Remember, always want to look where you want to go. Now you probably won't need any throttle coming around here, it's just brake management. Most important thing is turn your head. You should be looking at the side window more than the front. And don't worry, they say the X vehicle can do up to a 45 degree angle without rolling up. Think how steep 45 degrees is, okay? That's ridiculous, right? That right there, like a 10 to a 15, that's nothing. Just keep looking around. Find your opening under the bridge. Driving to it and through it. That's it, Renee. You should already be looking for the opening underneath the bridge. Perfect. Eduardo, turn your head and turn the wheel. And right up here behind my vehicle, you guys are going to break. Now the button we press, Hill Descent Control, HDC. It's going to do exactly what it says. It's going to control the descent. Where I showed you at the bottom of the speedometer in red, that means it's turned on. Once you start rolling and that kicks in, that turns green. Basically showing you your speed. Now I will go down and call you down. Top the hill, take your feet off the pedals. No gas, no brakes no cheating all right so i've started my run my feet are completely off the pedals mine's engaged and show me i'm doing a little listering five miles an hour never touched my brake pedal once renee if you're ready come on down because the speed is adjustable to the cruise control toggle switch left side of the steering wheel maximum speed is 16 miles an hour there you go, perfect. Eduardo, you're clear. Bring it on down. Even though you're not hitting your brakes, your tail lights are still being lit up. That's the dynamic stability control at work, the DSC system. Running the brakes left to right, front to rear, wherever it needs, or to keep you on a straight line. Frank, pull up right here, put it in park. You guys can do a quick driver change. Put Joe behind the wheel.
Now, Eduardo, use that left foot to your advantage. Remember, you need acceleration, but not a leg switch, not on and off. You got to squeeze the power. Stay relaxed. Let the vehicle do the work. Cross that bridge. Straighten it up a little bit there, Joe. There you go. Find your row of cones. Turn your head. Then turn the wheel. So important to use your eyes and look. That's a great habit to work on out there on the highways and the interstates. Um, when I'm on the interstate, I'm not looking at the brake lights of the car in front of me. No, I'm looking at brake lights 10 cars ahead. When I see their lights go on, I'm already reacting. Practice looking further up the road. Get that information as early as you can, guys. That's it, Joe. Eduardo, that's a good line. So get to the top of this next hill. Double check. Make sure you've got your green light lit. Top of the hill. Take your feet off the pedals. Let that hill set do its, do its thing. All right, Joe, I'm already clear. When you're ready, come on down. Now that system is designed best for snow and slippery surfaces. Also works in reverse the exact same way. Eduardo, when you get to the top, you're clear to come on down. If that was your snow-covered driveway you had to back down every morning, press the button, work with your mirrors, and guarantee be free. Again, that's a super job. Now leave that button pressed. There is still one more hill to go. Next, we've got a couple of offsetting moguls or berms. Uh, the first one, right side tires go up. Now the fence has always been harder to see. It's on the passenger side. Do me a favor and just pull up a couple of feet. Try not to run over my cones. This right here will still give you a great angle. But leave yourself some room. Now, back to the hill descent. It will go off automatically when the vehicle hits 40 miles an hour. It will disengage itself. Now, of course, we're not getting quite up to those speeds out here. Uh, it's unfortunate, but our ring of fire is still down right now. So we're not going to be able to do our ramp-to-ramp -ramp jumps. My apologies for that. One more mobile, left side's up. Obviously, we're about the angles out here, right? Now, this one's a little tricky because it's on kind of a curve. If you're not careful, it will suck you in towards the end. Don't let it, okay? Gotta stay focused. Leave yourself some room. Leave yourself an out. And then on the last hill, same as before, up and over. Take your feet off the pedals. You really did. Like a lap and a half running off road. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I mean, that's not your typical little back dirt country road, is it? Uh, they got some definitely some extreme obstacles, some hills. You know, BMW prides themselves on a 50 50 weight distribution on all their vehicles, and especially their X vehicles. Low center of gravity, they're not top heavy. That allows us to do what we just did. I love taking you guys out there. Um, people have had their X5s, their X3s. They've had them for years. They have no idea what they're really capable of doing. 
So I like putting you in the school vehicle to get you out there, you know, let you go through the water, climb the hills. Slowly make our way through these parking lots. Most of these are in our school fleet. We've got about 120. There are cars in here for technical training. Got instructors to teach how to fix not only the engine, but the bodywork. Lots on my right, one of the orange tags hanging from the rear views, DEL, featured delivery customer cars just like yourselves. The building to our left, see we've got our own full service and body shop right here on site. They take care of not only our school vehicles, but all the associates across the way at the plant. They're on the lease program where they bring them to have them service. I think from an old change to a crinkled fender, we do it all right here. And you see some bikes underneath the canopy. It looks like we got a pretty large off-road course tomorrow. Putting them back right where we got them. I'll take the first spot by the glass. Show you park to my left and Eduardo down there on the end. Put them in park. Hit your start and stop button one time's enough. That's going to shut the motor down. Don't leave the keys and the radios in the vehicle. Just make sure you get your personal belongings out. Cell phones. Number one thing left behind. 